Okay, so in Illustrator CS6, we have a new window and it's called the image trace window. And what we can do with tracing an image uh, is we can convert a raster image into a vector. So we can take a bitmap, a JPEG, a GIF, a PNG, and we can very easily turn it into a vector. So now this, this feature was also in um, CS5, CS4, CS3, CS2, and it was live trace. In CS6, it's image trace, it still is live trace, and what we're gonna find is that we have even some more options. So let's take a look. All right, so we wanna open up our image trace window, which we come to women emit window, and we open up image trace. Now, what we wanna do first is we wanna take that image that's a JPEG, the image I have is a JPEG, and we want to place it into our Illustrator, onto our Illustrator artboard. So we come to File, and we hit Place, and we take a look here. Come on in. Let's see. This one is mine right here. It's a JPEG, as you can see, and I'm going to hit Place. Now, one thing that we want to note, too, is that it really is better um, to start with an image that's a little bit of a lower resolution. And the reason is, is because it's a, if it is a high resolution, it will just take longer for it to trace. But, okay, so we come on in. This fits on my artboard. I have this selected. And what I can see, actually, I could come right up here and I could do image trace really quick. And I could choose some of these. So that's a way to go. But what we're going to find in CS6, if you're working in CS5 or CS4, you will not have an image trace window. Uh, and I have a video on doing a uh, image trace, a live trace in CS5 and in CS4. So take a look for those videos. But we're going to take a look at CS6 right now. And what we're going to find is that we have a bunch of different options over here. And really what I would say is I'm going to go over them right now. But depending upon your project, you'll know which one to use. And it's really you know, a great thing to just come in and play around with too. So the first one we have... Um, is we can say auto color. But let's start with high color. What we're going to find is that high color will recognize a lot of colors. Okay, so if we hit high color, there'll be more colors that Illustrator will recognize when it converts this image into a vector. So here it goes. Curve fitting. You'll see that this one will actually take a little bit longer usually too. Okay, so there we have it. Zoom it on in, and you can see that that is what it looks like, okay? All right, so moving right along. Um, we can kind of, well, let's actually give, give low color a shot just so we can see it. Now you're going to see, too, that you can come into the preset and play around in here, too. Um, but let's, let's go for low color. Just taking a look at these different options. Okay, so there's less colors. Now this one right here is a grayscale. Uh, I think that makes sense to you. I'm not going to push that one. And that will be, the, it will just turn it all into grays. This one, you can turn it into a black and white image. So let's take a look. Now, this one's not always going to work. What it does when, when Illustrator turns your image into a black and white, it will take the ones that are low, the, that have a um, tonal value, a value of light to dark, Below 50%, turn it to white. Above 50%, turn it to black. So it doesn't it doesn't always work out the way you want it to. And same thing with outline. Now, outline would work if it was more of a of a line, a pencil, like you know, a line drawing. And same with um, the uh, black and white. All right, so let's take a look, and I'm going to come over, put it on low color, and we're going to see that we can even get even more particular. We have a lot of information that we can work with, but one thing I want to bring your attention to is we can come on down below and we can see the amount of paths and anchors. So this drawing right here, turning this JPEG into a vector with paths and lines and paths and anchor points, it has 2,971 paths and 26,275 anchors. That is a lot that is a lot, right? That would take us a long time to do. 
but I just want to look at some of these other things so we have a sense. Then we could come in and we could choose, you know, I just want three colors, I just want six colors. We could come into how it's viewed. We could say we want it to see the outlines of it. Okay, so here we have the outlines of it. Um, we can come into the mode, again, change it to, and that was all up in there too. We can come up to the palette. We could limit it. All right, so I could actually say very specifically, I could come in and say, oh, you know what? I want this to just have eight colors, and I want to stick with that. And now we'll see what Illustrator does when we change it to eight colors. So every time we change them, there we go, we can see eight colors. Now we could come on in too down in here, and I just want to explain to you what this part is. Okay, so we look at the paths, and if we put it up higher, um, it just gives us more detail in how the trace is created. Um, so I think that makes sense to us, right? So if we wanted more detail, it will be, so anyone we hover will say, a higher will be a tighter fit to our drawing. And we could play around with this. So if you have a, a, a drawing with a lot of corners, let's say I wanted higher corner emphasis, and I do have some of these corners in this grid. Let's put up, let's see if it makes a difference or not. Um, and again, this is the kind of thing too, depending upon your drawing, you're gonna really get a sense of what it is that you're trying to do and how it does change it. Okay, and actually that did. I don't know if you caught that, but these corners, these little, I'm looking at my grid in particular. So let's put it up just a little bit more, and you're probably going to see that these will come more into a focus, and they'll be, the corners will have um, more of an emphasis. Okay, a little bit. All right, visual noise. Now, Visual noise, the higher it is, there'll be less visual noise. And sometimes what visual noise, what it, what it actually means, and you can probably identify it when you see it, when we look at noise, it will clean up some of like the, uh, the, the chunkiness of pixels on the sides of our paths. All right, so this is when we come down to method, just to go over these so you have a sense of what it is that you're looking at. Okay, so we could do one of two things. We could choose two different methods. We could say that we want all of these pieces to fit together like a puzzle, okay? And if I hit, I'm just gonna hit expand real quick so you'll see what I mean. These are all the different points and they all fit together like a puzzle. I'm gonna go over expand um, in my next video. And the other one right next to it is that they overlap one another, okay? And what that means is the one next to it right here is overlapping, okay? And what that means is that these objects will overlap. I think that makes sense, right? Okay. Now, what you'll find too is that the the strokes, I don't have this option right now. And if this was like a line drawing, then we would be able to play around with those. You're not going to always have those. So I think this makes sense. There we have it. This is live trace. But I want to show you one more thing. Now, what we can do when we come to live trace, if I was to come in, I want to zoom in a little bit more and start to, you know, change this around. Every time I would move it, the image would change. Okay. But now let's say I wanted to come in and kind of work with what I have. I could get out of live trace mode. This is live tracing mode. Okay. It's a tracing object and I could hit expand. All right, now what I've just done is I have turned this into all of the anchor points and paths. And what I could do very easily is I could come on in and select certain colors. Now, how would I do? Let's say I wanted to change all these green shapes to a new color. Well, I could do that very easily. I would take my white arrow, my direct selection tool. I would click. I could come to select. I could say select same fill and stroke. Why not? Now, with one foul swoop, I could come on in. Let's say I want to, I'm going to grab my eyedropper. I want to change these all to this blue color. I could click and voila, I've changed the color. It is that easy. Let's change one more color. Oopsie, didn't mean to do that. All right, so I need to deselect. Okay, select off. All right, I'm going to come on in. I'm going to grab my white arrow. I'm going to grab this purple. I could just change this one purple right here if I wanted to. I come on in and say, oh, I want this to be a little bit darker. Okay, change that one color. 
Again, I need to click off to deselect. Maybe I don't like that, right? So I select this color and I could come to select and I could say same fill color. And now I can come on in and I can, you know, choose another color if I'd like. Okay. And I have a new color. So there we have it. It is that easy and that much fun to change around. Now let's say I wanted to actually darken up my grid. Um, I could come in again. I could select that color right there. Again, I could come on in, select same fill color, and maybe I'll make it a nice, maybe a little bit darker. Zooming it on in, clicking off, over, and there we have it. We can see that we can have the possibilities are endless. Thanks for listening.